just to give an overview of what we did is we started a, a kind of a mental skills program with our eighth grade group, um, focusing on just different ways of viewing the game, different ways to connect with each other. Um, we tried out some different uh, philosophies of breathing and mindfulness and gratitude, mm -hmm. but the boys committed to wanting to play against high level AU programs and try to shift the culture of who they were competing against. So there was a lot of lessons I think we learned along the way and the kids learned along the way, but um, yep. I think it'd be cool for you to start off just with your vision of what you've seen from the past and how it shifted for this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, th there's a ton of little, and we'll get into some of it, I'm sure, but a, just a ton of little shifts um, that are interesting um, that we observe, you know, throughout the year um, by entering this. But um, really when I, when I think about what the origin is, um, I've always been um, curious about, you know, confidence being one of the easier ones to point out and, and define as a player, um, those that are confident, those that are not. And I've always, you know, as far back as I can remember, you know, high school, college, whenever I'd talk to players or coaches, you know, successful players or coaches, uh, about confidence like where does it come from like do people just have it is you know are they born with it nature nurture and most all of them you know pointed uh, they thought that it was most likely just you have it or you don't and um and of course uh, also looking at a biased group right they're the ones most likely that were the best players and they're the ones who succeeded and so they were probably the most confident and and had the most traits whether they were born with them or whether they you know acquired them over time um and so you know so i i was going in with the the thought that okay confidence is is something that you're you either have or you, or you don't and then becoming a parent of watching you know seeing each of the kids my own individual kids personalities be so different and then um realizing you know, firsthand that confidence, you know, kind of is, you know, you can see it shift, you know, it isn't just like a yes or a no, there's a lot of gray in that, in that spectrum. And then during COVID, I completely geeked out on, um, you know, understanding how uh, people actually learn um, and you know, reading a bunch and study a bunch on peak performance and, and, you know, really learning that the brain can be rewired essentially. Mm. And so through that process of going, okay, so most likely all of those, those, um, you know, casual interviews I've had with friends, colleagues along the way really didn't get to the heart of the matter because it was a biased group. And so <laughs> I was looking at, it, you know, all the science is that most of this can be trained. Um, and so then that's when I got really, uh, you know, curious about when and how can it be trained? Um, where do we go to get resources to be trained? How can we, you know, introduce uh, middle school kids to the to these concepts? Um, and uh, and so then, you know, obviously those are where conversations got more and more serious with you about trying to create a program that we could actually implement, um, you know, with our middle school group and and try to see at the end of it if there's something that we can point at some some sort of data that we can point out that says hey this works this is you know um this is something that is worthy of more time um and energy and ultimately is going to pay dividends for these kids um as they grow so that's the you know the long answer yeah no something that stood out there you know maybe i'll give a quick backstory of I was taking a mindfulness and masters in human performance program. So there was obviously an interest on my end of being able to teach this stuff, um, seeing how powerful it was in my experience as a basketball player, but just in general, how impactful the mind is on our perspective of certain things, how we view certain things really does affect how we perform or how we mm -hmm. interact with the world. And so when I studied all this stuff and I was getting the tools to, um, or I was being coached and I was feeling how different I was interacting with sport, um, I was like, man, what if kids at a middle school level had these tools before 
they get so ingrained because you did say the mind can be changed, but it also is harder the older you get. The neural mm -hmm. pathways become more built and built and built. So I think one of the coolest parts of this year was noticing a few players where they were able to take one concept and shift in a matter of days or a matter of weekends and run with it and mm -hmm. fully believe in it. Yeah. Whereas I can speak honestly about myself as I would get these concepts as a college player and I would read them as a freshman and not really have the guidance or like the mm -hmm. backing to trust it. And so it wouldn't click until I'm 26. Right. And so, yeah, maybe you can talk about what you saw as far as some shifts that happened from the start of the year to us going through this program and, and giving them some of these tools. Yeah, it, you know, I think one of the things that's so hard about this is it's so hard to truly measure. Um, mm. Like, how how do you measure mindset? Like, how do you measure how confident you are? Um, you know, it, it, when people say, oh, he's got a winning mindset. And it's like, when you really understand, it's like, again, it's back to that. Um, it, it's, it's a range, right? And it's not just like, you're either at a hundred or you're at zero, like you either have it or you don't, there's, it's continually fluctuating. Um, and so day by day, how people are feeling, you know, what else is going on in their lives, all those things um, affect that. And so going into it, um, honestly, as much as trying to define what the outcomes were going to be, um, I think we learned throughout the process that, um, it's a million little things, mm. you know, it's, a, um, and it's, you know, overall, you're trying to you know, build a framework that they can, um, you know, of, uh, that they can, that will help support, you know, them when things get challenging or they get setbacks or whatever, and they, they have this framework or belief system that allows them to bounce back quicker. And so, yeah, there's a number of moments that you can see um, kids responding differently to either big moments or, um, or, or frustrate, frustrating moments. And the one we talk about all the time is the one that you had a conversation with mid game uh, with a kid that was super frustrated and uh, to, to the point where um, he was essentially taking himself out of the game um, because of, of the pressure of the moment was, was too much and didn't know how to deal with it. And so there's really obvious ones like that, but, even when I've talked to his parents about it, you know, they didn't really notice that during the game. They mm. weren't close enough to see, you know, what, whether it's tears in your eyes or, you know, some of those big shifts that are, are shutting a kid down. And they also didn't see necessarily um, him the next game cheering extra on the bench or, you know, those little moments that you can see they're way more engaged. So those are things that you have to look for and, 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 and be tuned into, or I, I think it's easily missed, you know, yeah. both by the practitioner and uh, by the, by the fans or, um, or even possibly teammates. So that just also points to the power of it, but also at the same time, it's like the elusiveness of it. It's like, how does anybody else you know, jump on board when they're like, Oh, I didn't see that shift. Yeah. Like, but you and I did. And I know the kid did. Yep. Um, but beyond that, I don't know if anybody else saw it until the next weekend when he had the biggest weekend of his whole life. Right. That everybody noticed that. Um, but none of this turns into automatically, you know, your per shooting percentage goes up or your minutes go up or any of that. And that's the part where everybody goes to to measure, like, how good is this kid? And, you know, did this do any, um, you know, is this any value? Like, cause of my output different. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, I think what made our program unique was I was doing individual calls with the group calls and trying to yep. get to that individual um, narrative or that individual yep. issue that they were struggling with or thing they wanted to work on is all vastly different. You know, one yep. wanted to be a better leader. One wanted to be better at free throws. And, yep. you know, again, that like inability to make it tangible um, I tried early on in the year was to give them metrics of yep. um, something that isn't on the scorebook that you are grading yourself at. 
And we're yeah. going to see over the course of the year where you're at and where you're going. And, and then I started to just be like, man, I don't really like that. Like the, the intangible stuff is really where the gold is of all these things. Yeah. And if we can hold space for that, like, it's not about the outcome. Um, you know, one of the resources I gave them was the kicker that was like, it's not about the emotions you're feeling or the thoughts you're having um, or the fears you're having. It's really the action you focusing yeah. on making that action happen over the course of the long run. Yeah. Those outcomes will start to happen more organically yeah. and you're not dictated by the mind. The mind is yeah. not taking you away from being confident and doing all these things. So that to me was those little, those little shifts, but there was also another shift that I noticed was their honesty level. Their ability uh, yeah. to be mm -hmm. um, yeah. truthful with where they were at. Like the, yeah. coo the coolest moment of the whole year for me was when they didn't show up to a tournament and you were like extremely angry at the fact that they just didn't, they just mm -hmm. didn't choose to play. Yeah, and they had all yeah. these excuses. And when I got to the root of it, and they were honestly saying like, yeah, we just didn't show up, we didn't do this. And that was just so big, because they trusted the group enough to say, hey, I messed up. Yeah, and it won't happen again. But we have to see why you did why you didn't show up. And that that's what kind of got us to that point of man, they were reacting to it. They were having yeah. this excuse. They didn't know they had a choice in it. Yeah. Yeah. And, think, and, and so that's the tangible thing I see is like, okay, yeah. you're, you're in eighth grade and you realize you have a choice in every situation, no matter what you're feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how many baskets you throw in the hoop. Like that's going to serve someone in the long run. So again, it's kind of like, I, I think it's cool for you to just start ripping at the top of your head. Just some of those, those pivotal things maybe you saw that were yeah. tangible, but not like, basketball tangible yeah 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 for sure and you know and, and this is background i probably should have given at the beginning was you know i've coached these guys since they were you know in, in second grade and so i've known them we've been good family friends so there's a lot of trust a, a years of trust mm. being built up and a lot of baseline knowledge of where the kids are you know where their shortcomings are um you know especially on the on the mental side as you know well as the physical but um you know going along with the honesty level you know one of the things i was thinking about a lot is is how they were talking and this the things that they would talk about mm. um and um you know whether uh that we have got a van um that we put players in and um when they wanted to get together to ride to the, the games together a lot of them were like hey we need to meditate on the way there or you know we need to make sure that we get um uh, get the right uh, playlist going so we can get in the right space. And wow. so having them be able to acknowledge that that's a preparation point. Like I need to prepare my mind as well as my body for this competition that's, that's coming up. Um, I thought those were, um, were really big, um, you know, and, and, and it's like how they talk to, you know, is, is a lot of insight into how their mind actually works. And I see that the most with, um, you know, I've got three kids and um, two of my coach and then a younger one um, that is just entering into sports and, and just listening to how the kids talk about um, setbacks and, um, and how my youngest daughter is picking up some of that verbiage and thought process that the older ones are doing. And so seeing that happen, um, you know, kind of organically of picking up these skills or these traits um, that, uh, that really, you know, as we were growing up, it was all just the physical traits. So like, can you dribble? Can you pass? Like, you know, all those things. And then adding um, the awareness level to these kids that, hey, there's other ways that I can improve, um, you know, mm. my, my own situation uh, to be better um, in whatever moments. And, um, and so um, ha I'm having a hard time just you know, rattling off individual um, moments i guess of of certain kids um, but the biggest one like uh, about it or around how they talk and it's like um another guy who was talking about leadership you know i had a lot of conversations with him about how to be a leader this year that he i don't think would ever have had mm -hmm. whether he had 
um, maybe a, um, a well and you know more of a rounded approach to what he could do other than just be a good player. Yeah. Like, okay, how can, how can I keep other people accountable to these other things? You know, coach, I know you're worried about, you know, the offense and the defense, but how do I make sure that you know, these mm. guys bring the right energy? And can I be the supporter of that energy? Um, Cause realizing that energy is one of the biggest you know, components or the ingredients in this whole thing. Um, and so there's one kid that was wanted to be kind of in charge of, of energy level. Another guy wanted to be in charge of kind of, the connectivity and it's like making sure that every time that he comes in the gym, he's greeting everybody and, you know, building those connection, uh, uh, connections, you know, to his teammates. And, um, and he, he was really, you know, one of the other tools I gave him along with it is making sure you use their names, you know, because mm -hmm. every time you hear your name by somebody else, there's, you know, connective tissue that's being built. Um, and so I, I think this process, uh, um, helped, in a lot of the development for some of those guys figuring out what their strengths are and how they can use their strengths to then ultimately help the team and not being strengths like, you know, the traditional physical strengths. It's the right. other pieces that they're bringing. Wow. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely think of some other you know, more tangible ones as we're going. No, no, you're uh, I think you're dead on, man. Just like, I think what you brought up too is just the, the language, the narrative you know, the narrative that we use to create our experience really is that, I mean, it's going to create our reality, you know, mm -hmm. and that narrative that they're talking about basketball now, you know, I asked, I texted a few of the boys like, Hey, what did you take away from this year? Yeah. And the narrative that they're sending as confidence is what makes you good. Or, yeah. um, I need to be present. Like these yeah. are all words and language stuff that when you're in eighth grade and thinking of that, it's like, you yeah. know, maybe anybody who's listening, when was the first time you ever even thought about that in your life? Yeah. And right. these kids are in eighth grade. And I think one thing that I know I learned was, okay, they are in eighth grade. So I don't want to project any things or put expectations on how mm -hmm. they should feel based on how I've experienced my life or right. how yeah. I experienced basketball. It is very much coming into, okay, where are you guys at? Yeah. How can I, how can I learn you guys? How can I understand you guys yeah. and see where you need support versus you guys are going to feel anxiety if you go into a big game? Well, maybe, right. maybe that's how yeah. I would respond. Um, and so what I thought was just interesting, like a huge learning lesson for me is like, you just, you don't know, you don't yeah. know until you ask, you don't know until you start with that questioning mindset and curious about their experience. Yeah. And, um, in that there was accountability of like, man, we were frustrated that they weren't doing something. And it was like, man, well, did we give them the space to do it? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of humility that I think we needed to, to learn, or at least myself of like, okay, yeah. we want them yeah. to implement it. How, you know, it's uncommon stuff and it's, it, yeah. it is different. So giving them the space, but also what I noticed throughout the, the course of the year is like some of the players that I felt were not listening or maybe, um, weren't resonating to the topics as much yeah. ended up being the players that reached out to me the most or yeah. said thank you the most or appreciated yeah. it the most. And so I think that was another thing of like, you know, they are in eighth grade and when you're working with people in general, they might not give you a, a verbal response like, Oh my God, I really need this, but it's clicking, you know, there's yeah. seeds being planted on different levels. You never know how it's being planted, but, um, you know, at least for me, when I knew I was in that space of yeah. just being curious and trying to understand them, I felt like there was a resonance and a trust that they were able to, to proceed with versus, Hey, I have the tools. You need to take this. This is how you need yeah. to do it. This is what you're going to feel. Uh, I think that was a gift of us because we were so reflective on this journey. Like, Hey man, yeah. you know, um, let's maybe shift the, the zoom call this time. Maybe let's yeah. change it to where you're not using a PowerPoint. Maybe yeah. you know, we'll do some more one-on-one -on -one calls. I thought that was the coolest part of our program was not that it was some structured rigid thing, but we were able to morph with them and change yeah. with the group we had. Um, well, and I think it made it closer. Uh, and, and, you know, as you're touching on your own learning, um, you know, that's when you talk about proof of uh, concept, you know, I felt like 
I learned as much or more than anyone on this process. And, you know, when you're talking about, um, uh, you know, what the individual needs versus, you know, the as assumption of what they need to hear or the group needs to hear. And I found myself saying less and less to the group mm. as a whole and more and more to smaller groups or an individual um, because each kid just, <laughs> once you start going down this road, right, <laughs> you realize that everybody needs something different. Yeah. And everybody's comes at it some, differently. And so, so the, the words that I'm going to say to you know, a group of 10 kids, you know, like you said, it's like, you know, there's a good chunk of that is going to be lost along the way because it isn't being interpreted the way that you, you, you want it to be, or it's not the message that needs to be delivered to a group of them. Um, and so uh, that was one of the biggest things for me of learning more or learning and then going into the action steps of, of actually delivering some of those messages more one-on-one -on -one or, or small group. Um, which I, I wouldn't have really thought would be ultimate value until going, you know, essentially open up our own awareness to what these kids are and what they need and, and having some of the conversations with them to figure out where they are. Um, and then also, like you said, of being really conscious about not trying to fill them with additional things to think about or worry about or, <laughs> yeah. you know, Hey, hey, you haven't thought anything about your the mental power, so let's dump a bunch of stuff on you, and then okay, now now you're gonna worry about your jumper, your your all yeah. your other skills, and all your mental stuff that I have no grasp on yep. yet as an eighth grader. Um, yeah. And so, you know, one last one is to tie it into your um, your flexibility um, throughout the program. Um, that also, like, if you came in with a CAN program, you know, with the expectations, like, hey, on week two, like, we'll, we'll put this in. And on week three, we'll put this in. And, you know, like you said, it's every group is different. And everybody, and throughout the season, it offers different challenges. And so then it offers different learning moments through those challenges. And like a mixed up deck of cards, you don't know what order they're going to be in. Um, it's not a, it's not a controlled environment no and, and so some weekends you'll face with these problems and it's like okay well let's address that then since no use addressing you know what whatever else you know uh because we have this moment to learn from right now um and so using you know the season of how it naturally playing out plus using the individual's um and where they are and how quick, quick they're evolving of being able to shift and um and and meet them essentially where they are um I, I don't know if you could do it i don't know if there's another way to do it more effectively than that but it takes a lot of a lot of patience and a lot of work to to try to yeah. figure out where they are at that moment yep and then figure out which you know what needs to be taught in that moment as well so true, bro. I mean, I, uh, everything I've studied about what creates stubbornness in somebody to not yeah. want to change or not want to evolve is when you're trying to force some belief on them that they're not willing or ready to take in, or mm -hmm. you're trying to make them be a way that they're not. Yeah. Um, and with kids, it's like, they're still in eighth grade. They want to have fun. And if you can't coach to that and you can't be with that and you can't recognize, okay, it's not serious. It's not that serious for them. You yeah. Know, yeah, there are tools. It's like, we have to meet them where they're at. So almost like we have to lower our ability to be okay, we're kids with them. But we do have insights to help them go beyond some of those like those uh, blockages that may start to become worse patterns down the line. And so yeah. it was this it was a very interesting dynamic of like, okay, you come in, you give them some tools. You know, yeah. you, uh, you, you give them some tools, you give them time to digest it and sit with yep. it. And then those individual calls were so huge. It's like, okay, where are you actually at? Right. I know, yeah. I know I talked to the group about this big thing, but yeah. where are you at on an individual level? Yeah. And then having your buy-in as a coach saying, okay, we're going to do this gratitude thing at the beginning of the game. We're good. Yeah. I'm going to hold them to that standard. 
was everything. So I don't think there is another way around it. I think we always look for these shortcuts like, oh, you know, we, you know, bring this person and read this one book and do this. It's like, man, it's a very intimate process. It's a very uh, personalized process. And I think um, just I'm proud of our flexibility of, uh, upon that because it is a lot easier to say, oh, this is the way, this is our system and this is how, it, how it's going down. And, and if I speak candidly, like the Bainbridge system, the philosophy, the belief system there trickles down from that is like, oh, you know, we're good, but we're never going to be one metro. Yeah. And so if that's the system's belief, of course, the kids are not going to believe higher than that. You know, yeah. you take St. Peter's. Yeah. Well, who is going to wait? Who's going to tell them you are going to make the elite eight? Yeah. Nobody's going to say that. But if they're, if they have a belief within themselves and their system and their coach says, I don't care who we play, we're just as tough. There, there's a growth process there. There's an infinite possibility. Whereas if they're like, oh, you're a 15 seed, then no one's ever made it past the sweet 16. Yeah. That's the system and the belief they're going to buy into. There is nothing they can, they can attain higher than that. Yeah. And we see yeah. that with placebo effect of like the belief does shift your biology. And so I think us being able to recognize a lot of times that it starts with us. Yeah. How are we believing? How are we seeing these kids? Um, because they are, they're young, you know, yeah. and if we don't have that state of consciousness to see, man, this guy's really good at this. He can really improve at this. It's going to be pretty hard for them to evolve. It's going to be pretty yeah. hard for them to grow. And so I think that was, um, again, another huge learning lesson for me. It's not really what I have to say. It's the state of being that I'm in. It's the energy that yeah. I'm in uh, to allow them to follow that. Like, okay, this guy doesn't care about the scoreboard when he comes in the game. Mm -hmm. This guy yeah. doesn't, when he's coaching, he's not worried about the other team at all. Yeah. Then it gives my, yeah. my kids a chance to play into that, to buy into that, to talk about energy to be present to do all those things so i'm curious you know maybe your evolution uh from the coaching perspective uh and i wrote down here conscious coaching of sometimes you had to use some anger sometimes yeah. you had to strategically use that and i'd just love to hear i know how reflective you are but just i would love to hear just what you learned on that process of like when you were in a certain state of being how did it affect how you coach them when you were in a different state of being how did it affect you? Uh, for sure you know so so much of this you know being a, a parent as well and being a coach like it, it's it's the same role and ultimately you have to be who you are like mm. whatever state that um you are you know some people are more energetic and you know just naturally so and you know, they're going to run that at a, at a higher, higher, higher RPM. Some people are <laughs> a little more emotional. Some people are just calm and cool. And it's like, whatever you are, you have to be you. That, so, um, and I've always been fairly calm. You know, I, I have higher, high standards and, and expect kids to, you know, to reach for those high standards. Um, but um, through this process, I, you know, I was definitely way more uh, critique, you know, I critiqued myself way more than I normally would of analyzing, okay, what was my words or my tone in those moments? And was that helpful? Did mm. the tone help? Did the words help? Trying to pick apart which one was more valuable and realizing, you know, in some moments, they need something from you you know, maybe they need, they need a kick in the butt, like, because, you know, ultimately, that's, that's your role is to observe where they are, and where, where they need to get better to be able to operate at the highest level. And, you know, thinking again, back to an eighth grader, it's like, sometimes an eighth grader thinks that they're playing as hard as they can, and they have no idea that there's, you know, two or three levels above them that they're more capable of. And so that's the role of the coach, right, is to, to try to get them to that level. Um, and, and so ultimately, just like a, as a parent, it's like, yeah, you don't want to yell at your kids and you don't want to yell at your, your players unless you have to, at least that's my, like where I've always come from. And, but sometimes you have to, like to get the message that needs to be delivered. Sometimes they aren't able to hear it in another way. And the only way that you can do it is by, you know, bringing some more energy or, 
a different tone, um, you know, to the message that, that you're delivering. So, you know, none of this is, uh, you know, and maybe one of those preconceived mo notions is like you think of like the Zen coach is like, you know, never raises his voice, just, you know, speaks in even tones, and, you know, whatever. But in reality, that's going to help work for some people and not for other people. And some days, you know, you need a different message. Um, yeah. So that was probably one of the biggest ones is like, it's okay. Like, mm. I, it's okay to have, um, you know, that's being mad or yelling at them about a standard that we're not reaching. And most of it is because of our unwillingness, whatever it is that day. It wasn't because there was a lack of skill. It was more a, a lack of willingness to to reach a certain level uh a performance and you know so they need to be held accountable um and i need to be holding them accountable because that's ultimately my you know my job um and so looking back it's like yeah I, I i didn't like any of those moments like going through them i don't want to have to deliver a message like that but looking back and going i i think they were really necessary at the times that mm -hmm. i had to deliver messages like that yeah um, and then on the awareness of um you know, one of the other parts is like we talked about a lot this year is none of this is like hey you learn it and now it's permanent right it's all right you, you learn how to you know deal with pressure situations or perseverance or you know uh whatever and okay you learn that tool now it's you're, you just go you're good now um and realizing that we're as coaches as grown-ups we're dealing with that same stuff every every day and so there's some games that for sure you know because of who was in the stands who i was competing you know who's on the other other bench that i was competing against some extra layers of um you know of pressure are involved and you know me just like the kids have to deal with those things yeah. um and so I was able to use a lot of the tools just, you know, going through it myself of realizing some, some of the times is like, Hey, you know, this pressure is, is getting to me. And so I'm not behaving in the way that I want to behave or my natural state. Uh, uh, and so I don't think I'm, you know, operating in my optimal, you know, uh, my optimal level because of these other things. And so that I had some games that were off games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, to be honest and looking back, I was like, I, I, I didn't do my best in that game. And uh, so some of that is, is, you know, holding myself to the same standards as them, but also at the same time of giving the kids some more grace at times, because, you know, still as a grown up, I'm dealing with the same stuff yep. and realizing that some days like you are going to try your best and, for whatever reason, you're not going to have it. Yeah. And, um, and so that's also the other message that we were really trying to be at home too. It's like, you know, some days you're not. And so you just have to deal with whatever you have that day has got to be good enough. Um, yeah. um, so again, there's another mindset piece or another framework that we are working on. And none of these frameworks are complete, right? Nope. And that's never. a part where I was like, there's still so much to to teach them there's still so much you know i need to learn i'm sure you feel the same way of like uh, of how how to implement a lot of the stuff and and there's a lot of moments that weren't able to get taught because of those moments never came up during the season yeah but they'll come up next year or the year after um and so it's part of that framework that needs to be continued to be built out um you know, for those guys yeah there's a there's a lot i want to reflect on just what you said, but just that final piece of being able to say, okay, if you have this program that you're trying to get them through at eighth grade, like you just said, if you have this expectation of where they need to be, then you're kind of already forcing the process. You're trying to get them through something versus where are they at? Meet them where yeah. they're at. Um, but like you said earlier, it, it just goes back to conscious coaching. I'm sure anybody who's listening to this is like, what grade are they coaching? They're coaching eighth graders and they're talking like, <laughs> They're thinking about how they're showing up to the gym and like how they're coaching the, you know, there's a reflection piece that you're, you've always undergone, which is why I've always enjoyed working with you is you're not just getting angry because a coach needs to get angry. You're not just, bah, you know, like that's how a coach needs to be. I need to scream the whole time. It's like, no, it's a, it's a strategy, you know, it's consciously used. It's like, okay, they need some anger right now. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And uh, I just noticed that in myself too, of, you know, sometimes it is easier to shy away from those uncomfortable emotions um, because they can make us feel inferior in some ways. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling anxiety, it's easy to show up and be like, man, am I good enough? Am I capable enough? I'm feeling anxiety. So I'm probably not as good as this person. Those are the type of ideas I tried to implement for the kids of being like, it doesn't matter how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. cares if you feel fear? But yeah. looking at myself is like, I still have those emotions and still have to go through a process of saying, okay, it, I'm not going to be defined by this emotion. It's, it's arising for sure. And it's uncomfortable, but it's not going to take away the value that I can bring. Um, yeah. And almost like when you're a coach, you're not off the hook you still need to come in with a, a level of presence and a level of me- mental preparation that the kids come in with. And so yeah. I just think I've noticed this my whole coaching career and even doing the mental skills with them and, and just the openness and the space that I have when I'm in a good state, their level of play changes so dramatically towards my state of being and yeah. how I'm feeling in that moment. Uh, and Cause it's like, if they are in fifth, sixth, eighth grade, yeah. they still need a leader, man. They need somebody yeah. to help guide them through that. And if that leader is showing them an energy or in a space of confidence and, and groundedness, they can, they can take, they'll learn more from that than the words. That's yeah. what I think ultimately I'm trying to get to. Yeah. And, and you know, to be honest on my own um, you know, coaching, that's one of the pieces that, I have never excelled at, and and it's something I've worked at. It. And, and honestly, I have a balance between like, all right, I I'm trying to always be the calm and cool in in the moment, um, and and realizing that you know some of the times they come off of that same energy, right? Mm. But it's too too calm, yeah. you know. They're there, and maybe that's not the state that they naturally run in, but they're reflecting off of off of my energy. So, you know, uh, Holly, my wife, has always um, you know coached me until this this last year, where you know you were able to be there at a lot of games, and both of you guys have a different energy than than me. Uh, you know, it's a more um, you know more outward energy um, of you know way more high fives with players and you know more uh you know more contagious energy and so uh you know one of the things that i i was always telling holly and you know you filled in that role this year as well it's like that's what i need her her to be like Mm -hmm. that's you know you need to be the energy coach like you make sure that you know you're bringing that energy and then they're feeding off you and if they're not reaching that standard then you need to you know bring your energy to them and you know help work out and that's obviously one of the things that you were so good at as well and it's like i always thought that it's like my my uh presence would help them in deficit times it's like mm-hmm. when they're having we're trying to figure something out it's like okay i'm keeping my head so you guys keep your head like yeah. we need to figure this piece out there's all these puzzles problem solving that's happening in a game and so best way to do that is with the, uh, you know, with an even head, but, and so those games that I was by myself, I think are the ones that I struggled the most with because I, I was trying to do some roles that were outside of my, um, no, my wheelhouse or my comfort zone Mm. and not having the energy coach that was, you know, their main role was they're providing that baseline, uh, you know, standard of energy, um, and so, um, yeah, no, that's huge. I mean, I, I remember texting you one game being like, Hey man, like, I think I need to shift my role. You know, you were having me yeah. drop some plays and stuff. And I was like, man, I just, I think, you know, there's might be a little bit of confusion for the players. Like your yeah. role should be that. And yeah. my role should be what I was brought in to do yeah. of being there for the mental side. And without that, without me communicating that to you, that conversation with that one player wouldn't have happened. Right. Um, yeah. And so one of the things that, you know, again, like even as you talk, there's a level of responsibility you're, you're claiming for, Hey, you know, I know where I'm at. I know what I can't give and where I need to give. Um, 
and without taking 100% responsibility, there is no way to change anything in our lives. So yeah. that responsibility and that reflection that you're having, again, is why I think the program we tried to do is so unique was, man, we mm -hmm. sat there and there was uh, an outcome we weren't um, proud of when they were not showing up to practice with energy or not respecting what we were saying or all that. And we're like, okay, what did we not do for them? Oh, well, we didn't actually, we said this stuff's important. We say it's just as important as the physical, but we yep. give them zero time in practice to actually implement it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can take responsibility for that and make a change and be humble enough to admit that to my players. Yeah. You know, uh, Hey, we just, we messed up. You know, I'm yeah. feeling this way, naming it, acknowledging. It. I just think that again, going back to what was so powerful is the honesty they were bringing. Yeah. Like when, when you can on it, when you can acknowledge something, you bring light to it. And when you bring light to it, you can change it. Yeah. But most of the yeah. time when people feel anxiety or fear or sadness, or they, they are low on confidence. Oh, I'll hide it. I'll yeah. hide it because it makes me less than. And I, if I, if I show it to anyone, da, da, da. and of course that would happen in an unsupportive team, but yeah. Our ability to talk about these things and, and reflect on it honestly and say, guys, we feel the same stuff. Yeah. We're going through the same stuff. We're just choosing not the tool to not get taken out by it. Or yeah. we're, we are farther along the path and we're getting down there. And so, you know, over the course of that time, there's a trust that's built that I doesn't, I don't think is built when you just spew off book quotes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's a level of consciousness they haven't gotten to yet, a level of knowledge they don't need. Yeah. Um, and so I think when you start throwing all that stuff, it's like, it's a different language to them. It doesn't yeah. make sense to us because we've been through these experiences and the language makes sense, but you know, you're not going to teach Shakespeare to a, fir a first grader, mm -hmm. you know, like they're not going to be able to de yeah. digest that. So I think that's, um, what I think is very, uh, I hope people take away is it's not reading a book or uh, watching a podcast on and just spewing it at them and boom, you guys should know this because I now yeah. know it. It's like, well, you know, if I'm 26 and I just learned it and it's taken me this podcast or whatever, how yeah. can I just immediately assume that an eighth grader will now live up to that same expectation of what I took 10 years oh, yeah. to figure out? So right. yep. I just think there's a humility and a grace that you talked about that I think part of this program uh, wouldn't have functioned if we viewed it the other way. They would have pressed against us because it would have been too much too soon too hard on them um so yeah. curious your thoughts on that yeah absolutely you know one of the things that you were saying and you know how i think of it is you know it's that foundation right is the foundational pieces that you know through our own experiences we've been able to build a bigger stronger foundation um mm. to be able to support some of this thought process um and be able to acquire new information you know, at a higher level than those guys. And so, so the importance of putting in a strong foundation or, you know, back to the mental framework to be able to uh, have them build upon it is, is huge. Um, and, um, you know, again, laughing is like, yeah, I'm sure if somebody's listening to this and, you know, they're talking about eighth grade coaching as like, <laughs> I, I think it's like the earlier, the better with any of this yeah. mental, mental framework, uh, you know, the building blocks uh, you know, that are required to be able to, you know, get a mental shift. Like they've already got a framework in place by now of how they're going to deal with, you know, setbacks with, you know, success with failure, all the of this thing. They already have it built from their own experiences. And most of it, I'm sure was trial and error. Most of it, they're not getting from their parents of like how to behave in those moments. Um, and so they are putting on different hats as they go. And maybe they get it from, t from TV, how you're supposed to celebrate or how you're supposed to behave when things don't go your way. Mm. Um, but wherever they're getting it, they're, they're getting it naturally. Um, and so realizing that now even in eighth grade is like, they're not conscious of a lot of it yeah but they already know how they're gonna, they're already going to react a certain way they they're programmed to react a certain way from their experiences that they've had of their life so realizing that like 
this is something that needs to go back to like the very foundation, um, the very beginning of these, you know, kids' journey into um, into sport. It needs to be part of, uh, you know, part of their whole process. You know, obviously it takes way more time and energy to figure out how to, you know, what, what level sh should it be at, you know, what kind of verbiage, you know, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, even the simple things, like I was talking about when my, when my daughter, when my, uh, 14 year old on, who was on that team, uh, you know, my daughter lost to this overtime flag football game and she was devastated. And my 14 year old was telling her about, you know, Hey, well, you know, could you have done anything differently? And she was like, no, you know, they just had this one play that um, we knew that was coming and we just couldn't stop it. And it's like, okay, so you couldn't do anything differently. It's like, nope. It's like, well, um, if you went in to the next game, if you played them again next year, would you have a different scheme? Or and she's like, yeah, probably. And so he was building on to mm. the idea that, you know, you, you win or you learn. And so this is a moment that you learn. Yeah, you're really sad. You know, it doesn't take away the sadness from... Uh, from the sting of the loss, but you use that moment to learn. And so he was talking to her about, um, you know, win or learn. And so every game that we were in, and she was sitting on the bench, writing on the whiteboard. If we were behind, that's what she was writing on, on the little board. Yeah. And so those are those little mental shifts that now she will think about losing differently as a nine-year-old um, that, you know, my 14-year-old at that time, you yeah. know, was thinking of it completely differently, right? Yep. Um, and so you think about how that will affect her growth traject trajectory. You know, she's got a big advantage now over, you know, even her brother is a couple years older um, because yeah. she's been introduced to a different way of thinking about it. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I just love Ellie's reflections, man, because she's the best. But uh <laughs> Just no, like that's it, man. Perspective is the greatest healer in a lot of ways. And, you know, like you said, they're unconsciously creating these systems of how they think. And if you can give them, hey, maybe, maybe there's another way to look at that. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a different way. Yeah. Um, but it takes that uh, groundedness and maybe that resonance. Like, I think it's very easy again. Um, and why maybe I, I love the way we did it of having the individual calls too. And I don't think I would ever do it a different way mm -hmm. is because when you talk to a group, you have no idea where they're at. Yeah. So if you throw a concept at them, that's very abstract and very paradoxical, which is all the mental skill stuff is extremely paradoxical. Yeah. When you accept something, it actually dissipates. What? <laughs> How does that make any sense to a, a kid that age? Yeah, you got to meet them in a grounded space. And so I think that's one thing that I've always been pretty good at is being a kid with them. Okay, yeah. I can make jokes and act like a kid like them, so that they don't feel like I'm this guy that's talking down at them with this lens of, you know, a squared b squared c squared type, you know, this is how it's got to be. You just offer them a way to think, you offer yeah. them a different way to view that experience. And so I think that's, um, again, why I emphasize those individual calls is, man, you could throw a lot at them in a group setting and it could be way ungrounding. It could throw them off and mentally get them um, not in a good space yeah, because it's too much and they don't know how to digest it. It's like you're eating this very nutrition dense food, but it's yeah. not getting through your system. Well, well you keep know? that mind, keep that train of thought. And then like, I think about, my you know, my oldest son who um <laughs> who really leads into this stuff right yeah and you know there was a time with the free throws at the beginning of the season that he was adding so many layers of uh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> into his free throw routine because he's like well this you know should produce this kind of outcome and i was like then i'm gonna layer this little thing onto it to remind me to do this and so he had like 10 different steps um, in his free throw because he was adding those extra layers on that, you know, he didn't necessarily need, but, you know, in that state, he was thinking the more, the better, right. The more of these mental tricks I can add <laughs> into this process, the better the outcome for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so, 
uh, yeah, continue if you can get back on track after that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think that's a great example because by the end of the year, you know, he texted me and said, dude, I don't even think when I go up to the free throw. Yeah. And, right. And, and that's the, that's the misconception I think of mental skills. It's not that you're thinking more, you're actually thinking less. Mm -hmm. You're just teaching yourself not to get caught up in the mental diarrhea that comes up or the physical emotions and you're not dictated by it. You actually yeah. have your values and your actions that um, take you to where you want to go. And it's, it's um, again, such a paradoxical topic. Yeah. And I love the paradoxical topics. I, I could swim in those <laughs> all day. So it's kind of a perfect fit for me, but it um, I also know how, man, you can get lost in that stuff. You can, yeah. you can overthink things. You can overdo things. And um, again, having a coach that reflects something back to you or can say, oh, I hear you're saying this. Can you tell me more about what you're saying? And asking you questions, you get to know where they're at versus immediately giving them a fix. Yeah. Oh, you should do this at the line. Okay, well, yeah. now that's another thing outside of him that he needs to do to feel like he can make a free throw. Yeah. yeah let's let's get deeper into what he's feeling and like how is he experiencing it what is going on and getting to like kind of a a perspective that he's at and then okay if you have this perspective of when you go to the free throw line these are the beliefs that come up how do you just shift it just a little bit yeah and as soon as you shift yeah. that perspective everything changes and so yeah i think if anything we taught these kids that it matters and that they all have thoughts and emotions and a confidence within them. And it's something that I don't think they'll ever be able to not think about. Yeah. But I think we did it in a way where it's not too abstract, where they all yeah. can wrestle with um, however it shows up in their lives. And I mean, I think that's the most beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the, the also things reflecting on the process, um, I, I don't know if this can be done, especially this age group, without being present. Yeah. Um, you know, because oh, one of the things we're talking present? about, yeah, one of the things we're talking about you at the beginning, it was like, okay, can we do this while you're in California and, um, you know, and have you know, weekly calls with these kids and, you know, maybe come up for a tournament at the beginning of the season, one towards the end and, you know, bookend it and then, you know, figure out where they grew throughout the year. <laughs> uh, but realize you know how many times we pivoted throughout the year or the relationships that you were able to build for then the trust to be able to be the door that gets opened or allows the door to be open to be able to have whatever conversation needs to be had at that time and then how many moments that you're able to have with them in um in the non-stimulated state right of sitting in those calls at eight o'clock at night and they're at home in their bed and you're just you know, you're, you're going through it the mental stuff you're talking about you know their adventure and you know, all this stuff but then being there on saturday when they're getting punched in the face uh, um and being able to then communicate that stuff in the moment mm. um you know I, I don't think it i don't think it has ha you know much of the impact if you're not able to be there you're, there's there's ways you can do it but i think this has got to be the most impactful way by being present in both of those states the practice state and then the performance state and um because they require different things um and then be able to support them when they're in that highly stimulated state that they cannot you know essentially support themselves or ground themselves because they don't have the tools yet they know yeah. conceptually what to do but they need somebody to help them through it. Yeah. Um, no, so. that's, that's great awareness, man, because I think uh, with the um, presence piece, like that's where the magic happens. You know, the semifinal game for the sixth graders where we're doing the chance and it's all in real time. It's like, man, we didn't plan that. We didn't script that. Yep. Um, there's no way around like actually living the experience, you know, being yep. a part of the experience. And, um, again, I just think that's the concept that I've learned a lot on this journey of, man, if I, if you really enjoy what you're doing in the moment, you have to be there for it. You can't just be half in half out. You have to be there 100% to see those changes, to see those growths, because most of the time 
what builds confidence is those tough moments and you still choose to do the thing you want to do. Yeah. It's not in the setting that we're in right now where we're talking about it and, you know, we can yeah. conceptualize about it, but you know, when you really get into that coaching experience, how are you choosing to, to activate those skills? That's when the, the confidence gets built. Um, so I, I really do resonate to that being present with them, being around them, having yeah. them have that trust in who you are, I think is the, it's the main route. It really is how it's who you are. It's not the knowledge you give them. Yeah. If you can allow them to be there, I think that's where those huge, huge shifts happen. Um, and I think we saw a few of those. Oh, know? for sure. And you know, thinking of like the physical skills or the outward skills are easy to see, um, easier to manipulate, right? You can see what they're doing that day. Um, oh, you're, you know, today your elbows flaring on your jumper and it's like it's easy to see that and correct that from the sideline um all the other stuff is all internal and most of they have hidden back behind a, <laughs> a, a, a steel wall and um and you have you have to have a relationship to be able to access that and figure out where they are and have them be able to open up and and allow you um to do that otherwise you know just thinking of traditional coaching like yeah you can set the tone um by example and they can follow but that's them choosing to follow it um and so you know with this component you're able to you know really be invited in because you were able to build relationships with them and then have them you know allow allow you to come in and, and see what's actually cooking up there um yeah and and that takes a lot of faith on their side to be able to uh, open up but you know like you mentioned before you know, nobody wants to open up about their deficiencies. Um, and so you have to have a, a, a solid relationship with somebody that you need to have ultimate confidence that they're there to help you, um, help you get better and, and, um, and learn from, from the experiences. And so without that, I, I don't think you, you know, you're, you're reaching them. It's a really good point, man. It's a really good point um yeah there's a level of trust that needs to be built I, I mean i'm just thinking back on my experience too of even if people had the greatest intentions they weren't listening to me or they weren't building that trust initially because they this is how you need to be mm -hmm. well all right maybe that is how i need to be but because you're forcing it on me i'm just going to resist it even more mm -hmm. you know or i'm going to buy in less and or I don't understand. I don't necessarily understand why he's asking me to be this way. It doesn't doesn't jive with what my previous understanding of this is, or feels uncomfortable. Yeah, so I need extra support getting there, or extra understanding of why I need to get there. I mean, it just like you hear the complexity of that. Just even you just saying <laughs> right. that, right? Yeah. Um, like, I think the, the whole coaching way is pretty it's pretty straightforward. You need to do this yeah. at this time. <laughs> or else but, all right that's, that's that's a good way to put it too though is like the reason why we're doing this is not for to win games in eighth grade it's it's really to empower them long term you know if you want to do the old coaching way and win a bunch of games and just scream at the kids of course you're going to do that but you know i think our philosophy is a little bit different man what if what if we did this I, and i think we're unique in the fact that i don't know how many people have done this yeah and that's, you know, even just saying it out loud is pretty cool. It's like, who has done what we just did, where it's that intimate and that um, thoughtful and reflective of, you know, us talking pretty much every day on yeah. things that we can do differently or ways we can help them. Um, so I think maybe a cool way to, to, you know, if you have any more thoughts, you can go, but uh, to end it would be for you to say maybe some things that you've you know you'll use next year or that you know if we did this program again what we would keep as like a staple um well you know reflecting on the very end uh, of the season and and the how connected the kids were you know and, and the staff to the kids and ultimately then the parents to each other um because i think that was a you know an outcome from how tight the kids are then it you know trickles out it is you know going back to like okay what are the most important things that we can 
teach them and still upon them that will give them success over time. And you know, one of the parts now, when you go back to sports of why people go into them, it's like, Oh, they build character and, you know, mm. and they build social, um, you know, they build, uh, allowed to you know, work with different people. And so you build the social, um, uh, you know, these social skills as well. But both of those are not getting taught. Like they have the <laughs> opportunity to learn, you know, um, about, you know, social dynamics and how to get along with, with people. And then also, you know, they have the opportunity to build character. But unless you're intentionally doing either or, or both of those, like it, you know, the, the moments come and they go and, you know, you either taught it or you didn't ta- teach it. And most likely you probably didn't teach it. And so they learn just whatever <laughs> they learn from around, you know, they're getting the, all the opportunities to learn, but they're not being taught, mm-hmm. I guess is, you know, another way of saying that. And so the, what, what I would say the biggest part is um, trying to create that same um, cohesive group um, setting that same trust level amongst the kids and the staff. Um, because if you are able to have that as a baseline, then whatever you put on top of it is going to be, um, you know, taken in and such a, you know, such a higher level, um, than it would without those, um, without that buy-in and that closeness of, of, you know, and the trust that the kids have for one of each other, each other, allows them to be, you know, more vulnerable, which allows them uh, the opportunity to grow, uh, grow yeah. more. Um, uh, so I don't think we would have been able to do a lot of the things we were able to do if we had a dysfunctional uh, core group. Um, and so making sure that that's, um, these things are in place at the very beginning to allow for the groups to be able to connect um, as much as they, they can. Um, to be able to allow the rest of this to um, to get layered on top of it. Great point, man. Yeah, it's like that's the intention at the start. How do we build trust within this group first? Mm-hmm. And then the content kind of comes organically again. I think piecing off that, that would be one thing I would add too. Um, but that final piece being, okay, we can have the content that we want to share, like more mm-hmm. blank, blanket terms in those yeah. Zooms. I think that would be very helpful is the first session be kind of like an exploratory session of, Hey, yep. what do you guys know about the mind? What do you guys yep. think about the mind? Do you guys yep. see, even see a value in learning about your mind? Um, seeing where they're at with a lot of that. And then that can kind of start the process of what you teach in those group zooms. And one thing I don't think I would ever give up is those individual calls as well. Yeah. I just yeah. don't, I don't think it would sit right with me to just do blanket group calls because I just think everybody is so unique and everybody yeah. has their own way of thinking about something and you might get a piece or a tool from it. But man, when I got to talk to him one-on-one, there's just like, okay, here's how it's resonating to me. This is yeah. how I would like to, to use it. Okay. Well, yeah. we need support on that. How can I help yeah. you on that? Um, that just seems like a standard that was unique to the process we used. Yeah. And to go along with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, getting common verbiage, um, essentially mm-hmm. and introducing them to the topic of the mind, which, you know, that was, you know, at the beginning where you, you know, more of the formal learning, um, process with four more formal slides and kind of the education piece, those need to be there at the beginning mm. of understand, you know, everybody needs to understand these concepts, right? This is, these are the areas that we're going to be talking about this year. And then, um, and then I think how it ended up working out through the, through the year, which was more organic is where you have to go then afterwards. So everybody's got, you know, this blanket understanding of, Hey, the mind can be, you know, changed, rewired throughout time. And so that's something we need to spend time and energy to working on. And we will, we'll dedicate time and practice to be able to focus in on the, the mental approach. But then also there's, like we were saying earlier, that there's lessons that we taught during the year because those opportunities came up organically because of just the process of the season and the issues that would come up. And so there's 
of just having to be flexible and having to be present to be able to teach those in in the moments that they actually happen. Um, so having some framework, but more at the beginning on teaching and then being really flexible throughout the year um, and being available um, to be able to meet the kids where they are, um, I think would be two of the things that I'd recommend to anybody that was you know, going to try to do something like this again. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that was powerful in the beginning. And, you know, I think, uh, what was that place they go for mental skills? Uh, in Seattle, the shooting place that was teaching them. Oh, PGC. Yeah. So PGC yeah, yeah. gave them a lot of, of those concepts. The teaser. Yeah. That kind of the teaser, like, yeah. Yep. So that yep. it can't be overlooked, but I just, yep. I kind of rise, I resonate more to like, okay, well the teaser isn't going to actually change anything for them. It's more of like, how does it, you know, resonate to them? So, yeah. but it's not saying that the teaser is not needed. It's like, you need yeah. to be able to, okay, if, if I don't know that it's an important topic, why would I spend any time learning the tools to do it? Yeah. So you give them kind of that overview without projecting anything onto them. Yeah. And then seeing where they say it comes up. Um, yeah. yeah given the why, given the why up, up front. Yeah. And then, and then given the how and the what as you go. Yeah. That's it, man. And then just being fucking, oh, <laughs> I'll delete that one. Being just, <laughs> I'm glad that was you because there's been a couple of moments that I'm, like, I'm used to just letting them fly. <laughs> uh, just being good dudes, man. I think just being reflective. I, I'd say that can't be, that can't be overlooked is how much reflection we had on ourselves um, well, being a coach. Yeah. I just don't think you can overlook that. Man, and this is one. Uh, you probably cut this out too, but as you're looking around in the peer set, I you know and these like we've already done this like before this of like looking at the coach that you're coaching against, or you walk into the gym and you just of the eight coaches that are going on the four different courts, you know, six of them are bananas. And and you're like, what in the hell? And so when you think about any of this stuff, um it, it just makes me think of like it's it's such a skill um, and new information skill to be able to teach it and support it and then the information um, is so <laughs> contextual that I don't think that there's very many coaches that will actually be able to pull this off because they can barely do the coaching that they're doing right now <laughs> <laughs> and that's the part where I to delete this bagging on other coaches but I don't the reality think so. is youth coaching it's filled with got people that essentially volunteered or got assigned to do it because there's nobody else that's out there and obviously there's no qualification process other than to you know be alive to to coach if you volunteer i'm sure that you'll find a, a coaching spot yeah um and so this takes a lot of intention time and energy to do and um so i think there'll be some people that'll they'll, they'll definitely want to um to try to do something similar um and kudos to those guys yeah i don't think it's i don't think we need to delete it because it just it is one of those realities of like there's not a lot of people that will want to do this or they may think it's stupid, yeah. but I think for the people that um, are interested, um, there's a model that we tried, you know, and they can reach yep. out to us. Um, I'm sure I'll put your contact in the video or the podcast, but um, just, they can reach out to us and see how they can, you know, get, be supported by what we kind of, we tried to do. Obviously yeah. we have a, a unique, uh, we had a unique, um, group a unique setting of being on an island um and so i don't know man i'm looking forward to seeing how we continue to do this and how we continue to evolve 